Hi folks, hope you're okay today. We're here to share the word of God today and hope you're okay and having a nice day. Ten Commandments were given by God. And the Ten Commandments are, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife, nor his manservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbour's. Exodus chapter 20, verse 3 to 17 says, Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. And what God is saying here is that we can make gods, we can make false gods, we can make our car a false god, we can make our house a false god, we can make sex a false god, we can make money a false god, we can make gambling a false god, we can make an addiction a false god. We can even have false religion and false ideology. But then he says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. We see how much of a society we are about what we worship. He says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. And when we start to worship things of this world, we become like the things that we worship. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. We shouldn't use God's name as a swear word. That if we use God's name as a swear word, God says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That we shouldn't take his name in vain. There is only one true God, and that one true God is Yahweh, the God of the Jews, you preach it, brother. the God of Israel. Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. That the Sabbath day is a day to keep it holy. And yet we turn the Sabbath day into a day of shopping. When it should be a day for the living God, for the Most High God. Thou shalt not kill. Even when we get angry, even when we commit abortion, abortion is killing says thou shalt not kill. The law of the land states that we're allowed to kill a baby who may have mental difficulties right up to conception. But the Bible here says thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Our modern culture says sleep around. Our modern culture says just do whatever you want. You can have all sorts of different kind of marriages but the biblical marriage ignore you can sleep around and do whatever you want. You can have three marriages, you can have five marriages, you can turn the marriage into whatever you want. But it says here, thou shalt not commit adultery. And it's very clear what it means there, that only marriage between a man and a woman is acceptable before God's eyes. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor that you shouldn't go to court and tell lies about your neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. 
In other words, you shouldn't desire and keep wanting what everybody else has got round near you. You want a better car than, than the person who lives next door to you. You want a better house. You want their wife or you want their husband. The Ten Commandments give you the commandments to show us that we need God. We need His forgiveness. So it says, and you have he quickened, you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. You have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. That God quickens us out of our deadness. Who he had quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. says, and who he had quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. When it says who he has quickened, it means that when we walk in the way of the world, in the world's ideas, the world's philosophy, in the world's morality, then we're dead, spiritually speaking. We're like walking spiritual zombies. And as we walk in the way of our own flesh, as we walk in the way of trampling under God's command, as we trample under God's word, it says that he had quickened us who were dead in trespasses and sins, that God is the one that makes us come alive spiritually, that God opens our eyes, that God shows us the truth by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit opens our eyes, we're carnal, Soul under sin, we're carnal. Soul under the slavery of sin. And he says, but the carnal mind cannot know the things of God. Where is he now? He's here right now, sir. But the carnal mind cannot understand the things of God. I can't see him. But when the Spirit of God comes, he opens our eyes to the truth. We're blinded by the system, we're blinded by the devil. But the Holy Spirit opens our eyes. And he had quickened us, and he had quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin. If we continue to walk in sin, sin is the trampling on God's law. Sin is rebellion against God's law. Sin is trampling on God's law. God has a standard. And we trample on that law. We trample on the law and we say we don't care about you God. We don't care about your honor. We don't care about your day. We don't care about your name. We don't care about your standards. God, we throw it out and we will be our own God. We will set up our own standard. So God, Paul says, And you are the quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. God saves us from that mess. God saves us from that lifestyle. He brings us out of it and he awakens us to a new life. He awakens us to a new way, a new purpose. He gives us spiritual life by his power in the Holy Spirit. Where in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Paul says you've been awakened out of the walk that you had. The walk that you had, you've been awakened. And he calls the generation the children of disobedience. And we are children of disobedience if we continue to walk in the way of this generation. If we walk in the way of this generation, Paul calls us children of disobedience. That we're children of disobedience, that we are disobeying the word of God. We are disobeying what God says. And so he says, we are children of disobedience. We are disobeying God, and so God calls it children of disobedience. Are you a child of disobedience today? Are you disobeying God? Are you trampling on God? Are you ignoring God? Are you rejecting God? Then Paul says you're a child of disobedience. Children of disobedience. Children of disobedience. 
Don't be a child of disobedience. When a child disobeys, it has to be corrected. But any parent who loves their child will tell the child the truth. Any parent that loves the child will love the child. And God has a love for you. God has a love for you. But as your father, he, dis he, he, he chastises you and calls you a child of disobedience. When you trample on his word, when you reject him, when you curse his name, when you laugh at him, when you mock him, when you trample on him, when you ignore him, it is called children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversations in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh of the mind. And we're by nature the children of wrath, even as others. So Paul says, by nature we are children of wrath, because we follow our lust. We follow our lust. We have a lust for gambling. We have a lust for sleeping with men and women. We have a lust for getting drunk. We have a lust for taking drugs. We have a lust. And that lust takes over and consumes us, and we follow that lust. And we follow that lust to its nth degree. We have a lust for money. We have a lust for gambling. And we follow the lust. And the lust leaves us in a terrible spiritual state. Among whom also we all had our conversations in time past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh of the mind and were by nature the children of wrath even as others. And he says, by nature we are children of wrath. Yeah. That if we follow our lust, if we follow the lust for gambling, the lust for sleeping around, if we follow the lust for getting drunk, the lust for anger, the lust for hatred, if we follow those lusts, it says this, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. The word of God says we become the children of wrath. The children of wrath. That if we follow our lust, we become the children of wrath. That the wrath of God comes upon our lust. We become the children of wrath, says God in his word. The children of wrath, if we continue to be consumed by our lust, consumed by money, sex and power, Paul says we are children of wrath. That God in his great power, in his great majesty, in his great glory, wants us that we are children of wrath. If we continue to go down the path, of following our lust, of trampling on the word of God, we become children of wrath. I don't want you to be a child of wrath. I don't want you, and God doesn't want you, to be a child of wrath. Children of wrath is a terrible statement. It is a terrible statement and a terrible indictment upon our culture. That if we, all of us, even me, if we follow the lust of our flesh and desire money, sex and power, drugs and getting drunk and all the rest of what this Get world drunk. says, we become children of wrath. But God, who is rich in mercy, but God, who is rich in mercy, for his love, great love, wherein he loved us, but God is rich in mercy. God is rich in mercy. However much you have followed your lust, however much you have made a mistake, whether you made a mistake as a dad or a mum, or a grandma or a granddad, or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, no matter how much you have made a mistake, God is rich in mercy. Hallelujah, God is rich in mercy. God is able to cover every mistake that you've ever done. God is able to cover every mistake that you have ever done. 
and to give you a new start today. God is rich in mercy. God owns all his mercy and all his grace is offered to you today. God is rich in mercy. I don't know. God is rich in mercy. He is rich in mercy. God can cover your sin and forgive you today. God is rich in mercy. And God wants to show you his forgiveness and show you his love and show you his mercy. God is rich in mercy. We have Donald Trump, he's very rich. We have people who are billionaires, they, they have billions of pounds. We have people who have trillions of pounds. Japan has trillions of pounds. They are rich. But it says God is rich in mercy. God is rich in mercy. In other words, God has so much mercy to pour in your life. And he wants to pour that mercy in your life. He wants to pour that mercy in your life that you have the healing that balm of the love of God in your life. God is rich in mercy. And he wants to pour it out in your life. He wants to pour out the riches of his mercy in your life. He wants to fill you with the riches of his mercy. God is rich in mercy. God is rich in mercy. And he wants to pour it out in your life. If someone was going to give you a lottery ticket, and it was going to give you a million pounds, would you take the lottery ticket? You would be rich. Well, you can be richer than having a million pounds today by being rich in God's rich mercy. The mercies of God, let it flow in your life. The mercies of God, let it come in your life. The mercies of God, let it flow in your life. Let the mercies of God flow in your life. And let the mercies of God bring healing in your life and comfort in your life and forgiveness in your life. God is rich in mercy. And he wants to pour it out in your life. Let him pour out his rich mercy in your life. Let the mercies of God be poured out into your life. God is rich in mercy. He is a kind God and wants to pour out his love in your life. God is rich in mercy. Let him pour out his rich mercy in your life. Claim it by faith. Believe it by faith. Believe that God is rich in mercy. Have faith in the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. That God is rich in mercy. That he will cover your mistakes. David made mistakes. David slept with Bathsheba. David had Uriah killed. And yet in Psalm 51 he says that he was broken. And yet in his brokenness God forgave him. God is rich in mercy. And if you cry out to God today you might have failed in a marriage. You might have failed as a businessman. You might have failed as a girlfriend. You might have failed as a boyfriend. You might have failed in a relationship. You might have failed in some way. You failed your parents. You failed your grandparents. You failed your grandchildren. There's a deep sense in your heart that you failed at something. But I want to tell you that God is rich in mercy. That God is a God of mercy and forgives you today. If you but turn to his grace, God is rich in mercy. Allow that mercy to flow in your life. Believe in that mercy today. Allow that mercy to flow. Allow the mercy of God to flow in your life. Allow the mercy of God to come in and bring healing in your life today. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he loved us. For his great love. For his great love wherein he loved us. For his great love wherein he loved us. There is a great love that God has displayed. Where is that love displayed? It is at the cross. 
at the cross is where the love of God is displayed. Where in His great love He loved us. There is a great love been displayed at the cross. It is the love of God at that cross. Paul says, God demonstrates His own love to us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The great love of God can be seen at the cross. There at the cross, the Son of God laid down His life. And when He laid down His life at that cross, He laid it down for you. He laid it down on that cross for you. He laid His life down. God demonstrates His own love to us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And God laid the love that He had for you at that cross. On that cross, He laid down His life and demonstrated His love to you. He demonstrated His love. God's love was shown to you when He died on that cross. As He hung on that cross and the nails were in His hands and the crown of thorn was on His head, He was dying for everything that you did wrong. Every lie that you did, He was dying on that cross for your lies. Every sexual sin that you did, He was dying on that cross for your sexual sin. Every theft that you committed, every theft that you committed, He was dying on that cross for your theft. Everything that you have ever done wrong, the Son of God lay on that cross a lamb led to the slaughter for you. A lamb led to the slaughter. And he was slaughtered on that cross and he was slaughtered for you. That is why John the Baptist said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world and the Lamb of God laid down His life as a sacrifice for you. All you've got to do is say, you know what, Jay, I'm a sinner. The Apostle Paul killed people and he said, I am the chief of sinners. And we have to own up before God and look into the mirror of our lives and see the reflection and see how we have not been what we should be. I am that way, we are all that way. I can't judge you, we are all frail, we all make mistakes. But that blood, that blood shed by Jesus Christ covers your mistakes. But you have to believe in that blood. If you believe in the blood of Jesus Christ, it says the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. If you believe that He died on that cross for you, then you have become a child of God today. The moment you believe everything you've ever done wrong is wiped clean. The moment you believe everything you've ever done is wiped clean, you are forgiven. You are restored. You're a new creature. The old has passed away, and behold, all things have become new. There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. The moment you believe there is no condemnation, the moment you believe you are forgiven, the moment you believe you are washed in the blood of the Lamb, the moment you believe you are saved for all eternity, the moment you believe you are in the kingdom of God, the moment you believe you are washed in the Lamb and the power of God, the moment you believe you meet 
the living God in your life. For God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherein he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, he quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Grace is mercy that we did not deserve. God bless you. Grace is mercy that we did not deserve. Grace is mercy that we did not deserve. The prodigal son. The prodigal son said to his father, give me all my inheritance. And then he went off. He went off. The prodigal son went off and he had a good time. And he messed about and he had a great time and he spent all his money. And he wasted all his money. Not that. God bless you, sir. He wasted all his money. He wasted all his money. He wasted it on prostitutes. And he got into a mess. And he said, and he was so desperate that he was eating the food of the pigs. He was in a right mess. And we can get in a right mess. We can start stealing. And and we can get in a mess. But he got in a mess. And he said, I'll go back to my father. And he went back to his father. His father didn't slap him in the face. His father grabbed him, put a ring on his finger, put a, a cloak round him, and killed the father's car. And he said, my son, was lost, but now is found. My son was lost, but now is found. My friend, you may have got in a mess, but if you return to the Father and say, Lord, I'm sorry for what I have done wrong. I'm sorry for failing you. You return to the Father and you'd return and know that Christ shed his blood and covers your mistake. As you return to him, you will be met with God's love and God's forgiveness. God will forgive you. Jesus said to a guy who was brought to him, he said he forgave his sin. Only God can forgive your sin. 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 it says if you confess your sins he is faithful and just to forgive us to cleanse us from all unrighteousness if we confess our sin he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness you want a second chance today. If you are needing to know why you're here, what is the meaning of your life, if you want to know the purpose of your life, if you want a direction in your life, if you want a meaning to the history of the times, why the way it is in the nations today, if you want to know why you're here, if you want to know where you're going, if you want to know how to live, if you want a purpose in your life, a direction in your life, then my friend, it's come into Jesus Christ. Come in to know that he died on that cross as the lamb shed for you. That the meaning to history, the meaning to life, the meaning to your life, the meaning to it all is in the love of God. And if you come to him, you will be forgiven and received. And you will be washed. You will have a new life. You said, Jay, it's all Bible bashing, bro. There's no evidence for it. There's lots of evidence for the Christian faith, but it depends if you're open to that evidence. I've heard many, many people say, 
There's no evidence for the Christian faith that when you present the evidence, they don't want to know. You've got to be willing and open-minded to look at the evidence. And the evidence is all around you. But you've got to be willing to be open to that evidence. But what we're sharing with you today, we're sharing with you a message of hope and a message of peace today. In that blood of Christ who shed his blood for you on that cross. In that blood that was shed for you on that cross. That blood that was given for you on that cross. Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane. And he, he prayed. And when he prayed, he prayed with great sweats of blood. He knew when he was going to that cross, he knew what it would cost him. He knew what it would cost him. It would cost him. Why did he cost him? Because when he went to that cross, he was not going as a martyr to that cross. He was not going as a political activist to that cross. He was going as an atonement to the cross. He was going to shed his blood as an atonement, as a sacrifice for you on that cross. That's why you went to that cross. And he knew when he went to that cross, the full wrath of his Father would be poured out on him. And the wrath of the Father was poured out on his Son. And his Son, Jesus Christ, when he was on that cross, and nailed to that cross, and shedding his blood at that cross, the wrath of God was falling upon him. And you'll never ever know how much he suffered, because he suffered for all the sin and all the wrong things that you and I have done and everybody else. And he was crushed. He who knew no sin, he who was perfect, had perfect joy with the Father, was cut off from his Father. Jesus was cut off from his Father at that cross. And he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And he was cut off, cut off at the cross because of you. He experienced the dark cloud of his father and he experienced it because he was dying and suffering for you on that cross. And if you turn to him today and say, Lord, I realize my mistake. I realize what I did wrong, put him on that cross. I realize that you are the Son of God. I realize that you died for me. And if you believe in him and trust in him, you become a child of God. It says in Romans chapter 8, verse 1, there is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. There is now no condemnation to them that are in Christ. It says we are new creatures in Christ. The old has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We become a new creature, a new purpose. You're right. You're right. We have become a new creature and a new purpose today.
immortal, invisible, God only wise, enlightened, accessible, it from my eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise, unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, nor wanting, nor wasting, thou rulest in might, thy justice like mountains, I soaring above, thy clouds which are fountains of goodness and love. To all life thou givest, to both great and small, in all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree, and wither and perish, but not changeth thee. Great Father of glory, your Father of light, thine angels adore thee, all veiling the sight. O Lord, we would render, O help us to see, tis only the splendor of light hideth thee. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, enlightened, accessible, it from my eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Heavenly love abiding, no change my heart shall fear. And safe is such confiding, for nothing changes here. All people that on earth do dwell Sing to the Lord with cheerful voice Him serve with mirth His praise for tell Come ye before Him and read God indeed, without our aid He did us make. We are His folk, He doth us feed, and for His sheep He doth us take. Oh, enter then his gates with praise, approach with joy his courts unto. Praise Lord and bless his name always, for it is seemly so to do. Oh, why the Lord our God is good, His mercy is forever sure, His truth at all times firmly stood, and shall from age to age end. All 
unto Jesus I surrender all to him I freely give I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all all to Jesus I surrender humbly at his feet I bow worldly pleasure all forsaken take me Jesus take me now I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all all to Jesus I surrender make me Savior holy thine let me feel thy Holy Spirit truly know that thou art mine I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all all to Jesus I surrender Lord I give myself to thee fill me with thy love and power let thy blessings fall on me I surrender all I surrender all all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all all to Jesus I surrender now I feel the sacred flame Oh, the joy of full salvation Glory, glory to His name I surrender all I surrender all All to Thee, my blessed Savior I surrender all. And can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me, who caused his pain? For me to him to death pursue Amazing love, how can it be That thou, my God, should die for me Amazing love, how can it be That thou, my God <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> excuse me <laughs> Hey. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Thou my best thought, by day or by night. Waking or sleeping, thy presence my life be thou my wisdom thou my true word i ever with thee thou with me lord thou my great father and i thy true 
Son. Now in my dwelling and I with thee one. Be thou my battle shield, sword for the fight. Be thou my dignity, thou my delight. Thou my soul shelter, thou my high tower. Praise thou me heavenward, O power of my power. Riches I heed not, nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and thou only, O first in my heart. I, King of heaven, my treasure thou art. I, King of heaven, after victories won, may I reach heaven's joys, O bright heaven sun. Out of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O rock of, of all. <laughs> God sent his son. Hey Joyce, you, you know what, you know what? If you want to know God, if you want to be right with God, 
If you want to be in the kingdom of God, if you want to be right with God, then it is to know that He is the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God that paved the way for you today. He paved the way on that cross. And He broke sin. He broke the devil. He broke the kingdom of darkness by shedding His blood on that cross. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And He shed that blood and took away the sin of the world with His own blood and paved the way that you and I could escape wrath and the hell to come. He went through a hell to save us from hell. That's what He did today, folks. Jesus Christ gave His life and let it shed His blood on that cross. But if you are searching for a meaning today, if you are searching for a purpose in your life, if you're searching for why you are here, or what is the meaning to it all, if you are wondering what does it all mean when all the nations seem to be shaken, and it all seems to be shaken in the nations, and you want a meaning to it all, and you wonder where the nation is going, and you wonder what the point of it is all, and you're wondering, well, God had a plan. And that plan was seen at the cross where the love of God and the goodness of God can be seen. God bless you, sir. Thank you, God bless you. God bless you. And the blood of Christ shed for you on that cross. God bless you. She with you? Yes. There's our competition. God so loved the world <laughs> that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes on Him shall not perish but have eternal life. And if you want to know God and if you want to praise Him and worship Him and love Him and if you want to be right with Him it's to understand that that cross He paid your debt that He wants to drag you out of where you are and He wants to bring you into a better life. He wants to bring you into His kingdom and bring you into His love and bring you into His joy. And God can do it in your life. God can do it and wants to do it for you today. He wants to drag you into this new life and to a new purpose and a new joy. The oceans of God, the oceans of the love of God, the oceans of goodness, the oceans of His love, the oceans of His joy, there is oceans of joy, oceans of love, oceans of peace that can be found in God. And it all comes by believing that Christ shed His blood for you. He says, come to me. Jesus says, come to me. All you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He says, come to me. Come to me, he says, come to me. Come to Christ. Come to the Savior who will not push you away, who will not turn you away, who will not kick you away. Come to me, he says, come to me, all you who are weak and devastated, and I will give you rest. He will give you rest. He will give you peace as you go to Him. Come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And He'll give you rest. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy Lord, thy rod and thy staff, staff they comfort me. You prepare a table before my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. And there, if you trust him, he will carry you through this life. 
He will carry you through the pain. He will carry you through the problem. If you trust Him. He is a great God today. We do not honor Him. We do not love Him. We do not praise Him. We do not give Him the glory. We, we do not care about Him anymore. We don't care about God anymore. We don't love Him anymore. We're not bothered about Him anymore. Yet in His mercy and in His love, He cries out to us today. In His mercy and in His love, He cries out to you today. In His mercy and His love, He cries out to you today. It says, here I am. My arms are stretched out to you. My arms are here for you. I am your Savior. I am the one that died for you. Come to me. All you are weak and have taken and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And it's coming to Him. And trusting in Him. And He will give you peace. And He will give you comfort. And He will give you joy if you trust Him. Me don't be smoking wacky baki. You don't need wacky baki, you need Jesus. You need Jesus Christ, my friend. A night with Jesus is better than with a night of wacky baki. Trust Him as your Lord and Savior. Trust Him as your King. Trust Him as your God today. Come to me, all you who are weak and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. God bless you. Are you saved? You're born again? I'm saved. Um, oh, Carry on.